So today we're gonna be reviewing the latest trending game, which is Atomic Heart. I'll be real with you, the only hype that I had for this game is that it's visually stunning. Otherwise I didn't know much about what it was or have any expectations going into it. But I'm gonna be real with you. This game is on Game Pass, which means it's an automatic recommendation from me. Why wouldn't you play it through Game Pass? But is this game everything everyone is hyping it up to be? That's what we're going to end up exploring in today's video because my reviews tend to be on the critical side. People are making some very bold claims saying that this game is extremely similar to Bioshock, which kind of makes sense to me, at least comparing this to Bioshock Infinite because I wouldn't really compare it to the original Bioshock shock but anyways first let's talk about the good stuff so what atomic heart does right is the gameplay and controls are really really solid it's just it's a buttery smooth experience the melee combat and the gunplay everything feels good on top of that, the graphics are insane and the game runs like a dream. It, of course it does. It's on Unreal Engine, which is actually optimized. However, as you would expect, the PC port of the game is really problematic. I've had the game crash on me multiple times. Come on in. Have a cup of tea. Wait. <laughs> and also erase my save data a couple times too. May be real, man. <laughs> I don't know if I like this game. <laughs> what? No. Okay. The world itself is also really, really cool. Like there's just so many little details crammed into everything. There, there's so many like weird machinery that I just really enjoy like the art direction of this game. But one thing that I find questionable is I've seen a lot of other reviews praising this game's story when it's just... It, it, it's not good, man. Like the story is god awful because of the fact that the English voice acting is pretty bad. But on top of that, the main character is just unlikable. Like he's just a jerk, man. I like I've never had a, a main character that I hated so much. We're all going to die. Okay with me. You first. What? Think Duke Nukem, but He's not trying to be like sarcastically funny or anything. Like this character is just a loser and an idiot, but the game doesn't seem to know it. Like it almost feels to me like the writing is done by a teenager because they just kind of do things because they think they're cool. Like characters will just drastically shift their tone and emotions based on the immediate moment. What the fuck is taking you so long? Choke on your pesticides, bag. What the hell, dude? What? One minute they're swearing up a storm because they're in the middle of combat, and then two seconds later they're just calm as a cucumber because, oh, that's just, the scene doesn't call for me to be animated or angry. And then when your character isn't dropping F-bombs, your glove is going to just be lore dumping on you with what's going on in the environment or what this machine is that you're fighting. And the funny thing is that the pacing of the story is all over the place, and so is the gameplay. I'm not necessarily saying this in a negative sense, because I did enjoy the gameplay aspect of the game because the controls are so tight, but I'm just letting you know that it's very, very strange. Like, one minute you're going to be just running down corridors, axing and shooting robots, and then the next minute you're doing a wave defense in a room while you wait for a canister to fill up, or you're going on the slowest platform known to man while you slowly activate switches. It, it's just, it's very, very questionable. The thing is, I wanted to press on through the game because I wanted to see the interesting enemies or the interesting bosses or even the interesting abilities that you can get out of the skill tree. And the game unabashedly allows you to respec at any time to build into any skill tree that you want. I really appreciated how solid the gameplay was and how upfront it was about allowing you to change your abilities on the fly or dismantle gear that you don't like and get all of the materials back without any consequence. But the further I played into Atomic Heart, the more disconnect I felt from the story and more particularly from the main character. Now, at the end of it all, I can easily recommend this game because it's on Game Pass, which means that you only have to pay like 10 or 16 bucks a month in order to be able to play this game, which is awesome. That's a steal 
for the amount of content that you get out of this. The thing is, last year we ended up having kind of a similar game, but it was like 10 times better than this, called Dying Light 2. But nobody really talked about Dying Light 2, it didn't make it to any Game of the Year awards or anything like that, and I think that's just because it released so close to Elden Ring. And the only reason I'm bringing this up is I feel like Atomic Heart has the advantage of no competition right now. Most people are fresh off of Hogwarts Legacy and they're looking for the next game to play. And let's be real, that's all Atomic Heart really is, is the next game to play. It's filling the void between the next big release. The thing is, even though I'm criticizing this game so harshly, it's not that I would say that it's inherently a bad game, it's just that my experience with it was very meddling. There wasn't any particular part of the gameplay or story or adventure that stuck out to me. The only thing this game's got going for it is that the world itself visually is really, really intriguing. And so I give Atomic Heart a 3 out of 5.